pounds short put with 56 pounds weight toss for height and the 28 pounds weight throw. An athlete may specialize in one or more events, but as in the decathlon, it's the athlete who gives consistently good performances that's likely to win the overall championship. Well, talk about good performances. One thing we can be sure about is Seven Days has given us a good performance as we watch the Ellen Pike. It inspires for Elbow. That's why they called him the Elbow Pike, Derek. I thought you might want to get that in. Marvelous atmosphere here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And the first event in our second day of competition is the event most people think of when they talk about Highland Games. Yes, indeed, Derek. There are many theories as to the origin of the caber toss, but regardless of its origin, this event of tradition and excitement is clearly the most popular in the Highlands of the Games. The caber, it's not a, your ability to throw far, but your ability to toss the caber accurately. The goal is to turn or flip the caber so that the end that the athlete was holding up exactly ends opposite the point from which he tossed it. And the judge behind the athlete determines the result based on position on an imaginary clock. And 12 o'clock is considered to be a perfect toss. If the caber cannot be turned by the athlete, a judge on the side determines the score based on the degree of rotation. One of the most important factors is to take into the account the caber itself. Due to the differences in weight and length, each one has to be handled a little differently. Look at the interlocked fingers around this one. A typical caber will be over 20 foot in length, weighs about 120 pounds. Mind you, that's a challenge. I don't think I could even pick it up and never mind to throw it. And you've got to balance it as well. Today's caber, that one's about 21 foot 10 inches to be exact and weighs 120 pounds. All right, Tommy, this is the first round of the caber toss. And our opening competitor is Gordon Martin from Scotland. Eight-year-old from Rocky Norman near Aberdeen. Oh, a nice, nice toss there, but he's a little bit off the mark. The runoff was perfect. What's trying to balance it here? You use everything you have. The Canadian, Harry McDonald. Oh, Harry's having trouble with this one. Trying to get a run up to it. And then you have to set yourself. Get all your weight behind it as you release it. It's got to do a little dance. You hope for a 12. Not close to a 12 then. Now that's more like a 9. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, 9.30. Pete Falsanella. The local boy from Swarthmore, Pennsylvania. Oh, he's having trouble balancing. He's run out of the line. But the judge will decide the line behind him. Oh, that'll give him the lead. And the caber toss. Alcinella knows this is the man who has to be stopped. Ryan Vieira. Oh, Vieira has that determined look on his face. The judge right behind him. Sets, tosses, it dances. Where does it come down? Look at that, Derek. Well, that's the best we've seen today. 12.30 by the overall leader. Might be given a run for his money by this man, Francis Bratner. Well, Francis being pulled off line a little bit, but you can see the judge stays behind him. He decides where the line becomes then. Respectable. No, oh, he doesn't think so. He wants no part of that one. Look at that. You can just tell by looking at him. After the first round, Ryan Vieira leads with a toss of 12.30, followed by C. Falsanella, Francis Bretner in third, and Harry McDonald and Gordon Martin tied. Gordon Martin is one of the better caber tossers in the world. He starts out the second round. Well, you've got to get a little bit of speed up, but the first thing is you have to do is balance it. He's balanced it perfectly. Now he's got the speed up. He sets himself. That looks like a good one. Where will it come down? Pretty good, Derek, I imagine. Yes, he takes the lead. A butcher by day. Well, he certainly didn't butcher that one. That one was nearly perfect. Harry McDonald seeking perfection here. Could go into third place with a decent attempt the control. He's laboring just a little bit, but just a little bit. That's pretty good. 11 o'clock. Harry McDonald moves into third place. And Vieira failed to turn on his second attempt. Francis Brebner is up next. with Harry McDonald for third place. So at 
to the second round. It's Gordon Martin of Scotland taking over the lead, followed by Ryan Vieira. The Canadian McDonald is third, along with Francis Bretner of Scotland. And again, Dodge and Gunn failed to turn this monster caber. Round three, Gordon Martin. Well, they have to adapt. You can see there's a little bit of a bend in this caper. It's causing a few problems for some of the big boys. This one's definitely a problem. 1.30 on his final toss. He'll sit out the round with a best of 12.15. He has the lead. Harry McDonald trying to challenge him. Couldn't do better on his final throw. He remains locked together with Bretner for third. And Ryan Vieira, who had trouble earlier. He'll hold on to second place. And Francis Bretner was, in many ways, the favorite going into this competition the caber tossing oh look at the job he's having balance he's using everything even his ear now he's using his strength he finally gets it under control ahead of steam he sets he tosses and that's perfect 12 o'clock for francis bretner and he takes over top spot what a superb display by francis bretner that perfect 12 o'clock toss on his final effort Finishing second is fellow Scotsman Gordon Martin with Ryan Vieira for once, ending up in third. But on the overall points race, Vieira has strengthened his lead. Bretner's win of the caber toss helps him move into a second-place tie with Carl Dodge. Plenty more to come here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Rejoin us in just a moment for the 22-pound hammer throw. watching Ultimate Heavy Athletics on TSN. This is Ultimate Heavy Athletics on TSN. We're getting ready for the 22-pound hammer throw. Well, this is very similar to the 16-pound hammer. Quickness is not such a factor, but you really have to be dug in, and you've got to use a lot of brute strength on this one, Derek. A fan of plenty of that. The overall leader, Ryan Vieira, and a towering 109 feet 5 inches. He's the early pace setter. Francis Bretner. Got a pretty good one in, Derek. Not quite as good as Vieira. Well, this man has a sore back. Can you tell it on this? That's pretty good for a man with a sore back at Angelback. Just off Bretner's mark. Well, the idea with this, get a lot of speed up and release it at its highest orbit. Gordon Martin just coming up shorter than Alistair Gunn. So at the end of the first round, it's Ryan Vieira in the lead and a fight for the places below him between Brebner, Gunn, and Martin. They're all around 106. And to the second round we go. Ryan Vieira in the lead by less than two feet. Oh, this is a mighty throw. This is a mighty throw, Derek. Very close to the marker, indicating the field record. He's just short of that. 117, 2.5. Sends Vieira's lead. No one else was able to improve in the round, so at the end of two, it's Ryan Vieira with a near record throw at top spot, followed by Francis Bremner. Starting out round three. And Vieira, the man of the moment. Can he get the record this time? Doesn't look quite as good. And that's shorter than the 117 plus of the second round. As Vieira makes way for the man they call the Tack, Francis Bretner. On the 106 mark, last time out. The effort put him there. Oh, he's improved that by almost a foot. He'll wait out the round. Bretner in second. And here comes Carl Dodge. Well, uh, Dodge needs a big throw here, Derek. He's in seventh place. He's going to have to improve a lot if he's going to stay in this one. Hero of the sheep toss yesterday. Oh! Well, he showed a sound improvement. That moves Carl up from seventh to third. I think it was the sound that did it. He made a lot of noise. So Ryan Vieira wins the 22-pound hammer with close to a record throw. Francis Bretner holds on to second place. Carl Dodge hit his big throw to get him into third from seventh. Alistair Gunn finishes.